Hi and welcome to this video on periodicity. So this topic more or less just combines bits and pieces which you've probably learned elsewhere in it in terms of ionization energy, atomic radius and the melting and boiling point. So it links together a few chapters but it's going to be summarized here for ease of use. So I'll start off what we're going to be looking at. So periodicity it means repeating trends across a periodic table. So it wouldn't matter if you were looking at period two, three, four, so forth, there are certain trends in it which would repeat. So you need to know in terms of your blocks, first of all, should be straightforward. So your SPD blocks, the reason they're broken up into this, it's just to do with where the outer electron is. So outer electrons in the S subshell, D subshell, and P subshell. So we're going to be concerned with period three, which just runs across the S and the P. We're not going to be looking at the D block for this. So first thing to look at, atomic radius. Now atomic radius across a period always decreases. So, it wouldn't be perfectly like that, I'm just not going to bother standing here drawing an exact graph for you. But it always decreases across. The reason why is if you think in terms of the energy level what they are in, they're all in the third period, so they're all in the third energy level. Yes, there is some slight differences with the subshells in terms of the energy, but same energy level in there. The biggest factor which is actually causing the decrease in atomic radius is the increasing nuclear charge. So what I mean by that is effectively just the, the nucleus is getting bigger. So if you think of it like this, electrons in your outer shell here, nucleus there, so the nucleus is trying to pull in those electrons because obviously nucleus positive charge, electrons negatively charged, they are reaching out, attracting them, trying to pull them in. So as your nucleus gets bigger across the period, so starting with sodium effectively and then working across to um, argon, it starts to pull in that shell a certain amount. So it's not going to be loads, it's not going to pull it in right next to it, but it will constantly pull it in. So atomic radius decreases across a period, reason why you were in the same energy level but there is an increasing nuclear charge so it pulls it in a bit more obviously when you drop down to the next period well you're going to be starting a new energy level again and then the process as I said repeating trend just starts again you start there as the nucleus increases that would start to pull in as you come across the period so atomic radius there Now I'm going to jump a little bit, just look at melting point, boiling point, um, more because they're smaller. The ionization energy one tends to be where most of the questions are asked. So the atomic radius ties in with the, the ionization energy mainly. But we'll look at melting boiling point for now. Right, so I'm just trying to visualize this in my head. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're gonna be down to chlorine. And then down to argon. So look roughly like that. You can plot the numbers again on a graph. I'll talk about what I'm looking at. So across here, we've got the three metals. So we've got sodium, magnesium, aluminium there. So they've got quite high melting points. Reason, metallic bonding. If you're asked to explain why, just state the definition. So there is strong electrostatic attraction between the positive metal ion and the sea of delocalized electrons. So that explains why metals have got a much higher melting point than say these simple moleculars across here. As for the trend about why it's increasing there, 
Well, think about what's actually happening to the, the positive metal ion, in other words, the nucleus. So the sodium, you could think of it as having sort of a, a plus one nucleus, whereas the magnesium a plus two, the aluminium a plus three. And also the amount of electrons in that outer shell. Well, sodium's got one electron in the outer shell, magnesium two, aluminium three. So if I want to smash the aluminium apart, it's kind of... that. So I've got to break the attraction between that 3 plus nucleus and the 3 electrons around it in order to melt or boil it. Um, don't say metals exist as ions, I know I'm talking about that there, but because you, the aluminium has never lost the electrons, it is neutral. It's just this is your nucleus in the middle, the sea of the electrons, sea of electrons are floating about it there, delocalised, and you've got to break the attraction between these. So increases because you've got an increase in positive metal ion and you've got more electrons in the, the safety localized electrons. So that explains the metals there. Up here. So here we've got silicon. Silicon, very high melting point, even more than sort of the aluminium metals and such like that. Reason why silicon's got a high melting point, it's got a macromolecular structure, so similar to diamond effectively. So if you want to melt or boil that, then you've got to supply enough energy to break lots of strong covalent bonds. So say that if you're asked why it takes a lot of energy. Lots of strong covalent bonds need to be broken. In order to break bonds, you've got to put in energy. Where do you put that energy in from? Well, effectively raising the temperature. So that is why this has got a much higher melting point than the others. Now there is a drop here. These two tend to get asked as an exam question. Phosphorus goes round as P4. Sulfur goes round as Sa. With these, we are now looking at the simple molecular. So all of these here are the simple molecular. The reason phosphorus is above chlorine, well chlorine goes round as Cl2. And obviously your noble gas just exists by itself there. So phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon. Phosphorus exists as P4. Because these exist as, as discrete molecules, then you are looking at the intermolecular forces here. So always get in when you're talking about intermolecular forces that it is the van der Waals between P4 molecules that you must break. Now S8, S8 is above P4 because obviously S8 has a bigger MR than P4. So there is more electrons in S8 between two S8 molecules therefore there will be more van der Waals between molecules. Get that in. Never mention between with these, these are intra, that is why they are much stronger, whereas these are the intermoleculars, so these are really weak and will usually be either liquid or gas at room temperature. So S8, bigger MR than P4, hence more van der Waals, hence higher melting point, because you need to put in more energy to break them. Drops to Cl2, because again, just decreasing van der Waals now, because of smaller MR, and then argon existing by itself, again, smaller than all of the other three, so weakest van der Waals in total, effectively, compared to those. So that's your trend for the, the melting points explained. Now, ionisation energy. So, going to look at first ionisation energy. Again, I'm just roughly sketching there, just to go through the actual dips. 
So ionization energy, the Newtonal definition for first ionization energy, it's the minimum amount of energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in the gaseous state. So you can usually see that shortened to an equation. And then the delta H there just to say the energy to do it. So this is first ionization energy. So there are three factors to consider when looking at most of these. That is nuclear charge, so how well the nucleus is keeping a hold of that outer electron because you're trying to smack it off. If the nucleus has got a strong grip on it, it's going to be harder. You've got atomic radius. Well, if the outer electron's closer to the nucleus, there's going to be more traction, so harder to remove. And electron shielding. Now electron shielding, you've got the nucleus sort of in the middle, you've got the outer electron floating about. If you've got other electron subshells in the way, they block that attraction to the outer electron. And also, electron to electron, they will be repulsing the outer electron. So they'll be trying to get rid of it, keep the nucleus for themselves. So sodium to magnesium increases why is magnesium higher well magnesium has a small atomic radius they're in the same subshell so same shielding and it's got a bigger nuclear charge so bigger nuclear charge small atomic radius therefore more traction to the outer electron harder to remove so the general trend as you go across the period is an increase why well you're in the same energy level and the nuclear charge increases. So amount of protons in the nucleus goes up. Also the atomic radius, think back to that. Atomic radius gets smaller across a period. So we're getting smaller and the nucleus is getting bigger. So effectively it's better at holding on to the outer electron across here than it is there. So that's why these, when they tend to react, usually lose electrons, whereas across here tends to gain. Now there is a dip here. So there is two irregularities you need to know. The subshells explain this because this is smaller, it has a bigger nucleus. We would expect it to hold the electron better, but this has less shielding. And also, if you look at it, we've moved into the P block here. The P block has a higher energy. So if you were answering that, you would need to say that this is in the 3p the 3p is a higher energy than the 3s so it would apply even if you were looking at the the second period just the 2p would be higher than the 2s so 3p higher energy if something has a high energy you do not need to put in as much to take the electron away from it so that explains that dip there now for across here, so there is another dip. So this dip, um, you'll always see it usually asked as either the nitrogen-oxygen combo, the phosphorus-sulfur, or um, arsenic-selenium. Same explanation for those three, just like the 2S2P there. If you do the box configuration for these, What you will notice here, you've had to pair up an electron. So that is the reason there has been a dip. There is paired electrons in the P subshell. Electrons, what is the charge on electrons? Well, you've got negative and negative. They do not like being near each other. So these will repulse each other. So the repulsion in there means you do not need to supply as much energy to kick one of them out. Hence, there will be a lower ionization energy there. So that's a general trend across a period. Uh, other questions which tend to get asked along this lines. Trying to predict what group something's in. So they'll show you successive ionization energies.
So ionization energy, it's a single step process. Every time you smack one electron off. So this is first. Notice you finish with a one plus. Second, you finish with a two plus. Third, you'd finish with a three plus, so forth. Now it becomes gradually tougher because you are trying to remove an electron from something that is more positive each time. If it's more positive, it's going to have a hold of the electron better. Now if you plotted a graph for all these, you might get something that looks like this. So there's initial bit. And it might ask you to predict what group it's in. Now the way to do this is look at how many electrons are removed before the big jump. So one, two, three, and then there is a big jump. What this tells me is there are three electrons in the outer shell. Why? Well, when you try to remove this fourth, it's not any faff on about it has a noble gas configuration, therefore stable or anything like that. Never talk about noble gas configurations being stable with this. If you do that, I will reach out of this video and strangle you Japanese horror style. Because you are moving to an inner shell, it's going to be closer to the nucleus and there will be less electron shielding. That is why there is a much tighter grip on this. So again, just to reiterate that point, if I asked you to compare something like bromine and krypton and which has the higher first ionization energy, do not just say krypton because it is a noble gas, otherwise strangle time. Krypton, higher ionization energy because bigger nuclear charge, they're in the same shell, so same shielding, krypton is smaller, smaller atomic radius, therefore better attraction. So back on this, so when you've got successive ionization energies, look for where the big jump is. And that tells you what group it's in here. They sometimes phrase that where they ask you which would have a higher ionization energy like that. Write the electronic configuration down. So write the electronic configuration for magnesium. So you should know the first bit and it would finish 3s1. The sodium ion would finish 2p6. And then compare them. So yes, magnesium has a bigger nuclear charge. So that's attracting more. But notice, this will be closer to sodium's nucleus. So it's lower atomic radius. It's also going to be suffering less shielding. So less shielding, small atomic radius, two to one outweighing the Mg plus is bigger nucleus. So this will have a higher ionization energy than the magnesium ion. And I believe that is all there is for periodicity. It's a fairly short topic, more or less a recap of the others. Keep at it.